right so a quick recap we are done with the first five heuristics and we have talked about that in the previous class and we are going to cover the next five so are you all ready yes 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 no? yes. yes okay yeah so first question what is wrong in this example this is coming from linkedin you have removed some items and that is what you uh, see so i think that the check mark uh, with green it uh, says that uh, it conveys a wrong message this is what i think how uh, normally whenever uh, a task is completed a uh, green color and a check mark is indicated with success successful completion of task okay so but you have successfully removed some items it is a su think, successful uh, operation but it is overlapping so user is not able to uh, see like it is deleted or not uh, the same notification is being repeated multiple times yeah. like instead of 10 we can just cover it up in one notification so what is the problem that is the solution Uh, let's not talk about any solution at all right okay. let's talk about problems only right so what yeah what are you saying what is the problem there that it's no. annoying to keep cancel the notification and it keeps coming back so what Actually, is the problem the item, it keeps coming item back item is not specified the name of the item is not specified okay uh that's one problem anything else wrong so what shubham is saying is it it keeps coming back i mean what is the problem if it uh, it keeps coming back uh i think uh, i am a uh, little bit curious about the one minute so 1m means is it a minute or like uh, what exactly i am just confused about that i think 1 2 8 uh one of eight one of six is deleting or like it is deleted or it is removed from there or still it is coming still a little bit confusing here okay. so yeah yeah you need to give some kind of uh, information it is completely removed something for me the countdown which is there at the bottom is okay and it is giving uh, information what is happening on that uh, status is there the only thing is um, and it is it is frustrating yeah one thing here if you remove something it will come in for example if you remove five items if you remove something in items it will show mm -hmm. only one uh, one uh, dialog box so it should not show each one item remove i think delete 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 something again we are talking about solution <laughs> yeah uh so my assumption is that it says one out of 10 that means we selected 10 of them at one go So which means uh, we are expecting just one uh, output of that, but it's showing multiple of them. So that's the problem. So we cannot undo. There is a problem which I am feeling. Okay, undo can there be. There is one. no restoration. I yeah, I think we are okay. performing the same task on ten items, uh, and it's showing uh, one, uh, one by one. So it will be. okay so what i'm hearing is there are three or four different problems that you are talking about one is that you don't know what the item is because it says item you don't know what uh, one m means because you don't know and another is things are keeping uh, you know uh, coming to you again and again now which problem would you prioritize over the other in this context mainly uh, i guess i think again and again coming first one i think it is uh, user not understand why it is coming again and again and another one is like the name uh, as jinal said that the name is not item is what item exactly they are going to remove first item is different and second item also same same name so that is the thing and uh, yeah 17 and 16 something like one out of 6 uh, that is not correctly mentioned one out of uh, six means what it is like that right yeah. so yeah. what you are saying if i understand you correctly is you are you will prioritize the problem of it is keep uh, it keeps coming back right it yeah. is multiple yeah. steps for you 
yeah is what you want to prioritize any exactly. other thoughts from anyone else normally uh, we see a progress bar even if uh, we are removing any item mm-hmm. or multiple items we see a progress bar so it's missing here and it's coming so but you are so... seeing one of 10 1 of 9 so it is kind of progress okay or not yeah but it is confusing okay <coughs> that's confusing so which which problem would you prioritize that problem or the other, any other problem if you want to solve this problem i mean this whole thing that's happening here the overlapping thing overlapping. after yeah and also okay. yeah and also if you look at the background okay so the only purpose of this dialog box is the user has performed some action right so if we look at the background there is no such thing that that a user can perform an action so that this would be the consequence of that consequence yes consequence of uh, can you can you elaborate a yeah. little more yes consequence of a user's action hmm. what action shrikar yeah what yes, action sir. you are talking about the close action or the item has been removed action no no so if you look at the background there is no such thing that user can perform an action like i mean there is only about community guidelines and uh, privacy and terms and sales solutions right so if you look at all those four things there are there are informative purpose things so uh, yeah that's what my point was okay if you okay that is that uh you know you, you can take that as background right but what is the context here user is trying to do something with their mouse right and regarding i mean when they are doing that there is certain challenge there so in that context what are you trying to prioritize is it the same problem that everyone else is talking about or do you have any anything else i guess user is trying to like exit emergency exit he wants to so like he just want to to like exit out of it exit out of it there is a goal okay okay so if that's the goal what's the problem that they are facing uh, he have to like uh, go one by one instead okay. of like uh, at once he can like click and go exit i mean okay so what i am hearing collectively is that uh it's a lot of steps to you know get rid of that notification because they are they have already got the confirmation but they are having to again click on close 10 times so imagine a case if there are there were 100 items that they might have removed it's a problem okay then if you say that's the problem what heuristic is being, uh, being violated so okay yes it is flexibility and efficiency of use because it's not efficient for you you know that you have removed 10 items and you want to get rid of that particular notification you are having to follow 10 different steps to do that your goal is to cancel it out you uh, close it out for which you are having to do 10 different steps right so it's not efficient for you so it's a in the sense it's a violation of uh, flexibility and efficiency of use right so if we go on to the next one it's always you know uh, essential for any designer right so uh, to address two different intents right so i'll give you uh, a simple example right if you are for, if you are a first time user and you are using uh, google image search right you want to search chalk illustration right and you want to uh, you are looking for chalk illustration that is you know uh, you you know that you are talking about something which is black and white right so if you are a first first user you will just simply go make a query and you will get the result right but there is a faster way if you are a repeated user you know little bit more about google's features and you can actually filter it down by colors or any other uh, you know properties that are there so size is there colors their type is there so you can reach faster to your goal which is finding a chalk illustration right so yeah 
so uh, in the sense flexibility and efficiency of use is a heuristic that you must i mean address and apply when you are designing certain you know product to uh, you know cater the product for both kind of users whether they are first time users or you know they are existing users and make it very very efficient for them right it's not like giving them 10 steps to you know close down some dialog right so another interesting example would be if you are using a word document if you are using it for the first time how will you copy you'll select the text you'll go to file uh, edit and you'll copy and then you'll paste but if you are repeated user what do you do you use shortcuts right so that's those those are called accelerators that is that is accelerating uh, uh, you know your work so that you can get done with your goal very very faster right so yes that's the heuristic any to share one more example for this i am like uh, that you have said shortcut one so flexible and efficient and not clear about it yeah so you have the flexibility to do one thing in two different ways one way is you are going to edit menu you are copying the other way is uh, you are simply using your keyboard shortcuts so it's efficient that way the other example of just the efficiency efficiency would be the uh, the previous dialog that we saw the notification you put everything at once all the items at once and you, and you just put one close button and that's it then it is much more efficient you are getting rid of it in just one step and that's it so it's much more efficient for you right okay. yeah thank you yeah okay next question so here is a table right uh, about the pro- um, suppose you are an owner of uh, you know uh, some a warehouse where you are tracking tr- stocks right so yeah this is the table in which you are working so yeah look at this try to understand and let us know uh, what's wrong here and which heuristic is being violated so the first one that's wrong is we've already specified the category here but so we don't have to repeat under a product name uh, that it's a women's wear so because to order see the full name we'll have, we'll have to expand it so like uh, there's the data has been repeated and it's not much very efficient to expand it every time to read it completely okay so things are repeated that's one okay what else yeah um maybe it is ui perspective mm-hmm. the right side drop down icon the drop down icon not near by the uh, content it is a little bit far okay so see yeah. what you are doing here you are looking at a list of products so what are all the things that will be necessary for you to actually look at a list so graph something or your phone no no so no. if we, in this only right? okay okay so one thing here it is already product is a women's wear why we need to write all all the time women 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 so we can keep the top section is a only uh, if it is a this complete list of women's only right so complete list saying that women's women women so instead of saying women's so we can write down directly right? okay so but can... that's that's the content and that is something maybe you might not be controlling it right mm-hmm. so that can be uh, one of the challenge there 
is there any filtration where the user can in product name if i want to if i know a product name i want to search um and i want to get that information uh, that flexibility I, i don't know whether it is going to be there in, when the user taps on this uh, this is i think this is sort icon which is there right. but i'm unable to say i have a, a, an idea of a product and i'm searching for it and i do not i have to go through all the list and then i have to get it, the information of it that flexibility is not there in it okay that is in terms of feature right if yeah. you are expecting a feature it's not there but let me ask you a uh, you know uh, uh, a very specific question you are looking at a list of products hmm. do you know how many uh, products are there in this the count right you are talking about the count yeah yeah do you know no i do not no. know the count no we don't oh you can actually count. take a step back i would say you know the, the, what we're trying to do is we, everybody is jumping into identifying the problem okay let me give you the simple formula understand what the context is what is the user trying to do okay what kind of needs does the user have and then you evaluate how well this works because notice every time saurabh teaches you he always teaches you okay this is the what the user is trying to do and this is where the problem is you know so so what are the things that the user will try to do with this data uh the main main, main concern is the user will see that the in stock how many stock are there how many there is no stock mainly and uh, the uh, like uh, uh they he, he want to change the price sometimes if it is he is the owner of the company he wants to change the price at the same time he wants to uh, uh products he wants to add the product or delete the product or something like uh, he can adjust that uh, if you are not sure what will you do so you don't know how many products are there how many products are there which are in stock versus they are not in stock can you tell so how many products are there here assuming that there is no more products so uh, in, in in this part i think we can uh, count uh, left side uh, the, the different names women's uh, like uh, uh, the names what are the different name we can count there so we can okay. list down that the okay. we have a some 9 or 10 products are there how many specifically 1 2 3 9, 9 products are there and okay. seven are yeah. in stock okay so yeah see you just did something you didn't know how many products are were there right and how many products were in stock out of those so you had to count the other thing what prasad told us that uh, when he was reading uh, the names of the product he was not able to understand what that is specifically it is right so there was also a little bit of cognitive load right so if we are facing that issue here if we don't know and we are having to count what heuristic is being violated here are you on mute madhu you are speaking yeah yeah, yeah. recognition and uh, rather than recall because so our cognitive load increases we can we cannot understand that uh, like user takes lot of time to understand okay any other thoughts from anyone else maybe the full name is not displayed like for my uh, just a down and the remaining text is uh, is not clear so he has to guess what is it so you are having to guess so and uh, again you are having to put some effort to do something yes right. recognition of them okay to recognition rather than recall
agree not agree yeah agree with uh, recognition or uh, recall okay yes it is recognition rather than recall right because you don't know how many products do i have so you are having to put extra cognitive load to actually count it and then that's not it you don't even know that how many products are in there in uh, which are in stock versus not you are having to count that too the other thing is you don't know what that label means so you are having to imagine that too right so yeah that's a violation of recognition rather than recall and as you know designers you have you should always be designing for that right so if i go to the next uh, example and let's talk about this example now right it's a screenshot of a finder window of uh, you know mac os so if you see there are things here right so it is sorted according to today previous 7 days and previous 30 days so you are not having to recall that what i opened you know today versus what i opened in the previous 7 days you are able to recognize it you are not having to put a lot of uh, you know effort in uh, seeing that the other good implementation is if you look at the general you know habit of ours when we uh, when we download certain image from online in a lot of cases uh, you will not have the name of the uh, image right it will just be something like okay some abc or something like or image dot jpg right so another way they are implementing recognition rather than recall in this particular example is they uh, even if you have not opened that particular image they are giving you a snapshot of it so that you can recognize what is in there in that file right so yeah this is how you can implement recognition rather than recall in you know uh, different layers in your design so that you can actually help your users recognize rather than having to recall and put extra cognitive load right right yeah so that's recognition rather than recall any thoughts or questions so next question uh yes identify the context here and let us know what's wrong and what heuristic is being violated as a user i don't know what is error 404 mm. okay that's the problem so another one question is like what not found is like just not found what exactly not found also not there i think from the user came from the from blogger post i think he has to go back so the back button also i couldn't i think where the ways it is i think there is a proper way we are not showing to the user we should go the other way something like back button kind of thing and uh, yeah that is the the main thing is uh, like a name and 404 also we don't know what exactly 404 means Mm -hmm. and why he came here also he don't know what exactly problem it is a technical error like he wrongly uh, touched that and the page is not, there is no page they are not created or they are not built it mm -hmm. uh, yeah the user might confuse uh, if only two messages yeah so okay. the, the main problem here is uh, there is no solution there is no solution for the user like the system is only uh, letting the user know about the error but what to do after that okay so what i'm hearing is three different problems you don't know uh, uh, what not found right mm -hmm. you don't know what error for not for means and you also don't know what can you do if that's the problem here is that right yes do all of you agree uh, for these problems or do you have anything else to add okay what heuristic is being violated if that's the problem help users recognize diagnose and recover from errors yeah ninth one is correct okay okay yeah, you I have agree. remembered the numbering also <laughs> nice yeah. okay uh um okay i mean why why is it that only and nothing else you could have i mean okay yeah why 
Because you said, said, yeah, go ahead. Because you said, I'm able to recognize the problem and. Uh, and i don't know what are the further steps to be taken like troubleshooting in all okay okay uh, the system is not providing any help to the user like if uh, the error is occur what should the user do next how to recover from it exactly yes so yes user is not able to in first place recognize what the error is it is just simply error 404 and also not uh, diagnose it like why that error happened you are not able to access that kind of information as well and you have no way to recover you just you can just go back and that's it you will get back to the previous step that you were in and that's it so it's a not a good practice of uh, uh, it's a violation of help users recognize diagnosis and recover from errors right and now let's talk about any uh, another example in which it has been implemented right so here are some examples now i want you to look at it and identify which of the element is helping you recognize which of the element is helping you diagnose and which one uh, is helping you recover so the message is helping us uh, recognize what kind of problem we are facing okay so the message is there is there anything else let's talk about recognition first uh the red outline okay the red That's outline showing the that uh, there is an error then the message about uh, the system has diagnosed the error and uh, is informing the user and mm -hmm. uh, can we help you recover your user and there is a link so there is a next step for the user to recover from the error right exactly so yes uh that's a very good implementation of helping users recognize what the error was error has happened which has happened right and diagnose why that happened so that you can think about it and then recover from it how can you recover from it right uh so yeah that's uh that's a really good implementation of it and now so here is another example what's wrong here Too much noise. Too much noise. My mm -hmm. friend, it's very vibrant. Why being? Uh, why I mean, being it too much noised and vibrant is a problem. A lot of colors are being used. Uh, it's fun, is... no? It looks. It looks very exciting. But it distracts from the main. Uh, you are there to sign up. How come actually Yahoo is asking about Google? Continue with Google. Okay. So, what did you say the main goal is? Sign in. Okay. Actually, I am confused between the download and the signing up. means both are like looking like uh, have same emphasis on them means even okay. call to action is like uh, going with that same color of that image so it is not like differentiating kind of okay so what you all are saying is there is too much noise right and your goal is to sign in but you are also saying that there is too much emphasis being put to download now as well right okay and there is too much distraction is what you are saying in that sense any any other point anyone else would you like to add so what heuristic is being violated then minimalistic what's the full name of that heuristic can anyone help me out aesthetic and minimalistic search man google search aesthetic and minimalistic can minimalistic design yeah. so okay that's uh, that's the heuristic you are saying um i mean 
my question is is it not minimal enough no because user is confused like he need to download or he need to sign in okay and if they want to sign in right uh you can see also the cts are uh, also there is i mean of course the next is the primary ct but you have got other choices as well right for uh, creating an account or you can continue but yes okay i would agree that there is the, uh, there is that distraction that is there that might hinder you from uh, from your main goal which is you want to sign in very very quickly and uh, what the website is doing is it is cross selling the app uh, uh, you know download my app uh, offer there which is taking more emphasis than that right so yeah i would agree right so it's aesthetic and minimalistic design right so it's the other very very important heuristic that you need to be uh, keep in mind when you are designing certain things and it doesn't necessarily means that uh, you, you are looking at you know colors and you know colors and fonts and shapes and things like that what aesthetic and minimalist dis, uh, minimalistic design also means is that how much how much content or material my user is required to get to uh, you know succeed on their goals and very beautiful example of it is google in which if i ask you how many products do google have does google have a lot right there is a search feature that is there there is gmail that uh, there is youtube there is drive and things like that but still they are able to you know focalize on one thing uh, at a time and then everything else they are able to manage to you know minimize and keep it aside right so it's a very good implementation of aesthetic and minimalistic design in which if your goal is to search something you are able to do that and if you want to access something else you anyway have it somewhere else if you have that intention you can go there you can explore it you can get access to that otherwise you are simply uh, simply focus on it focused on it and you are able to get that done right so yeah that's the take away i would like you to take from here is it's not always about the number of elements that are there on the uh, i mean uh, shapes or colors but it is also what is the minimum uh, you know material that is required or minimum interactivity that is required to achieve your goal and design as per that that can mean that you have very uh, i mean the colors that are looking are not looking that nice to you but still even if you design google in black and white you'll be able to say that it is still aesthetic and minimalistic design because it is solving your goal of quickly make a query and you know get to the next level get all the search results sort of a good question yeah so like now google uh, is frequently changing its uh, this logo on the top it has some animation and sometimes it's like different kind of uh, pictorial things are there so do you think it distracts the user uh, because they are continuously you know improvising on that what do you think i'm not that sure i mean does it distract that does a uh, does it not distract what do you think no it doesn't distract to me at least because um, because i like uh, what did they do with their animation and i read about this stuff because they if uh, if abdul kalam is born on that day so they do animation regarding uh, their subject will be that so yeah sometimes i do and like enjoy that Uh, i mean it's made to and grab your attention there's one family tax task that you are going to do there and it's sometime good to grab is there just to grab your attention you can spend a couple so when you visit google are you looking for that or are you looking for searching something yeah, the primary goal is to search so that is not distracted so it's a clear that's it so if changing if you change the image there then does it distract No, I should not because uh, my goal is to go to the page and search. Just that's it. The primary goal is so that's uh, there is no change in that uh, process. Yeah. 
So the argument is, if you have just two things, like if you look at the page, you just have two key elements. You don't even actually look at the buttons and watch what you want on your favorite football team and Google offered in. You don't even look at that stuff, right? Your primary focus is the search box and that's it. You type in the search box, you hit enter. Along the way, you notice the icon is different, right? If you're curious about it, your mouse over it, it will give you a description and you continue on with your search, correct? And so it is fairly obvious. The search box is front and center and it's obvious. The Google logo is a secondary thing that is there. If you want to click on it, you can click on it. If you just want a mouse over, that's good enough, right? And again, you're not afraid of missing it because if you hit enter, you go to the main Google search result page, the logo is still there. So you can still go up to the logo and find out what it is. So there is, it's a very non-obtrusive and a passive way of giving you novel and interesting information, right? So I would argue that this way is not actually distracting and it's not even like a, it's, it's still a very minimalistic design. And uh, it is simply allowing you to discover things if you want to do it. If you don't want to do it, you can continue searching and there's no problem, nothing lost. Right. Now, the same thing, let us say you have like 15 different things on that page that you have to click on and you change your Google logo, you have a problem. Right. And so that's where this, uh, I would, my, at least my vote would fall. And, uh, and also, even in this minimalist design, uh, it has given uh, you user control and freedom by selecting the language also. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Anup. Let's keep going. Okay. So the next question is, this is bookfinder.com. Here you are trying to find a book. Now you can go through uh, the uh, screenshot here and let us know of what what do you think is wrong here? Remember, the goal is to find a book. Yeah, uh, I think it is a uh, more uh, busy space. I think so more options are, are there. So instead of uh, the user might confuse, like, uh, uh, like the goal is like a find a book, the author name, and maybe you can find out search are fine uh, like uh, the many options uh, appearing i think is some sometimes i should i should type uh, author i should type title so it is a little bit confusing me so where go, which which input field is correct one here you and can say you you also have uh, you know different ways to search a book in that case the design is working so if you want to search by author or title you can do it Otherwise, you can search by ISBN or by the way, there are other options that you can apply or you can leave it blank. Right. And also you can say that uh, they have minimized a lot of options. That's why they are saying show more options. Hmm. Right. I guess uh, they are not uh, giving a suggestion like like Harry. So they are like they can give us suggestions like Potter and this. So that way we can like easily find a book. I think I the top the section, book. yeah. Uh, one more thing, actually, the, the book top book price comparison online. So if it is a comparison, uh, what comparison it is there? Price comparison, something like. So once we click that, what would happen? Also, we don't know. Uh, but the user is finding a book. Like he he might be knowing which book uh, you he is finding. So by the title or by author name also, he can find the book. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there's something known as progressive disclosure. Like you disclose some amount of information as you move forward. Mm -hmm. So the problem that I see here is we are searching a book. There's a certain amount of information that's been asked. But then there's another, like a lot of other information that's been asked at the bottom. So if you're asking the user to search it, uh, like in the 
initial step as well why are you providing them the option to add even more information like if you want to include these information at the top as well you can just put search at the bottom and give some kind of division there so why did they give division there <clears throat> to show the user that you know there are two ways to search it okay and, and maybe uh, the other things are optional right so e- either you make search query that way or you use one of those options mm-hmm. right what i would like you to go through is each element that is there right so okay author is there you can do by author right you have you can enter title right you can select the language that is there then you can enter isbn now what does isbn mean do you know mm-hmm. can you know no. it no i think no okay then search right then type there are types any new used out of print that is there then you have features first edition assigned no pod no isp now again do you know what is no pod or do you know what is no isp yeah little tool tip would have worked <laughs> that's the solution right anirudh yeah so the problem here is if you see if you follow that path right the journey of a user through uh, who goes through each one of those there is a slight challenge in which uh, there are uh, if you are a book uh, i mean you are a book reader it doesn't necessarily mean that you will know what isbn means and you will have the number of it but in that case what will you do you would like to know what does it mean at least right you you require certain help from the system right for the different abbreviations that uh, for which the explanation is not there here right so in that case it's a little bit overwhelming experience in that case right so if if we are talking about that this issue which heuristic is being violated what do you think aesthetic and minimal design help 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 and document help and documentation why aesthetic why help mm-hmm. aesthetic i thought because uh, they are like giving us so much information at uh, this stage and i just want to do search a book they could have like uh, minimize it by like filtering out or like uh, maybe aesthetically maybe giving under a uh something like a icon or like a inside something okay and why help help might be uh, the main uh, thing is for example we need to give some kind of a legend so why what exactly isbn means and what exactly no pod means and no isbn uh, we don't know exactly what it means Mm-hmm. so maybe user knows that what it is exactly so maybe he can use this isbn directly if he knows the user knows yeah uh, yeah i i might think that help uh, the last one is uh, fall in the this category i think so what will happen is if you don't know the uh, you know what isbn means it's an increased effort for you and you'll have to look it look it up somewhere else because you are not able to get that help here right so generally when you design certain application or any experience right it is first of all it's a very good practice that you should not require any help and documentation and if you are able to design that kind of product you are in a very awesome place but there are cases in which you will require help cases like these right so in that case if you are not able to get any kind of documentation or help it's a little bit of a problem there right so yeah it's help and documentation and if you could get explanation of it here only you would you wouldn't have to go to any other place to look for the meaning of it right so if we look at the other example right so simply this is a screenshot of uh, documentation of uh, 
how you can use the sketch app it is very you know very uh, neatly organized all the things that are there right so there is the interface you can learn about the interface if you want otherwise if you are looking at uh, you know different things so i mean they have documented very very crisply and clearly so whatever you want to learn you can go there and you can learn it right because it's we are talking about a fairly you know complex application that you want to use so you need certain help and documentation there right so it's a good way because what you are doing is you are seeing the categories and not, not just that but you have the copy you have the explanation you have the visual cues as well so it is uh, you are able to get help right so as designers uh, first thing Sorry. yeah uh actually i had an knowledge uh, could you repeat this uh uh this slide yeah, are you yeah. asking about this slide yeah so here basically this is a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah documentation page of uh, sketch app in which you are trying to look for help to how can i use uh, this application in which you can access all the information that is there they can look at how does the interface looks like what is the basics of layers uh, layer basics are there shapes are there and everything and if you get into the other stage as well you have very clearly documented visuals that are there that you can see and then you can refer to the content that is there so it is one of the good examples of help and documentation but as designers what we will recommend to you is that first of all a user should not require any help if you are designing something but if you if they require you should be able to provide that help so that they do not uh, you know get confused or uh, you know uh, dro get dropped off right let's look at some other very very interesting examples very you know uh, how in uh, other context uh, you know some products are applying this principle so on the left side you see how to make uh, uh, they introduced a new feature and they want to teach it to you so what they are they are doing is if you open the assistant they are saying try saying uh, how to make banana bread so that once you say that you you are quickly learning it yeah. in few seconds you are, you have learned that particular new feature that google has introduced that's one way of uh, implementing help and documentation right uh, on the right hand side you have a you know a screenshot of an application of a note taking application right so that is nebo so it is teaching you how can you use certain features right how can you erase certain things right uh, yeah basically that and it is also helping you uh, uh, recognize that whether you are doing it correctly or not so if you notice to provide that help what they are doing is they are implementing visibility of system status and recognition rather than recall as well to help you right yeah. so if if there is any issue or there is any problem that you are solving which is you want to provide help and documentation so yeah it's there can be layers of different heuristics applied to achieve that particular larger heuristic right so yeah that's the takeaway i want you to you know get and yeah that's about it and uh, do you have any questions or thoughts so i just have one piece for help and documentation and if you've attended the workshop you'll realize most people will not read text so the simple thing is when we are designers the common tendency it's a lazy tendency but the common tendency is put more text to explain what it is or the lazy tendency is let us create a tutorial before people use my app now you look at how you use tutorials okay when you download an app and there's a tutorial you get irritated you just say skip 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 and then you just start using it you don't actually spend the time reading it isn't it so if you don't do it how would you expect your user to use the same thing so if a designer comes in and says i'm going to put a tutorial i actually laugh at their face because you know you don't use it and you're trying to do this so you're like a lazy designer Okay, so my argument is: do not be an intellectually lazy designer. Okay, do not go for solutions that you know do not work, even in your case. So, like creating a document, doing something else. You know, I am going to create training videos or whatever are absolutely useless, unless and until let us say that 
you know if i if you give me a software which at the end of the software if at the end of using that software i become a millionaire okay so i'm clearly very very motivated you can give me like 100 pages of documentation i will read it right even for like addictive software like games like video games and all that what do they do how do they do help doc, help and documentation has anybody tried to download a windows game or whatever and try to play with it or like you know even a game app what will tell you is okay now do this now do this now do this it will take you through the steps you know so you are still playing so you are still getting value while you are learning it's never that you know you learn and you get value so it's never that so the core thing that one metric that you always need to think about is time to value okay what is the fastest time i can give to deliver value to my customer okay and without compromising on the time to value if you can teach somebody that is great but if you are compromising on the time to value especially in today's world you are going to there are going to be competitors to your product that will actually do better than you and you are going to get eaten up okay cool i think it happened when uh, windows 10 launched uh, for the screen share before when you log in it mm-hmm. will uh, once you log in it will first time as a first time user it will show the complete video of uh, 5 to 10 minutes mm-hmm. even if you just switch to other computer again you are a new user for that computer so again it will show the same so there is no skip button at all right and i think the challenge there if you think about windows why do you think they get that confidence they get the confidence because you probably invested maybe you know 600 to 1000 dollars buying a laptop and so if you've invested 1000 dollars of course you have no choice you have to deal with windows yeah there is no alternative there is no alternative so the other alternative is you get a mac machine but a mac machine is three or four times more expensive expensive than a windows machine and therefore windows can have that attitude of like yeah you know i'm going to torture you i'm going to make you sit and watch all these videos you don't have a choice but again when the market becomes competitive you cannot do those kinds of games okay you have no choice and this is also when windows uh, i think it was windows 7 came out and then uh, uh, windows uh, after 2000 there is a new version between be- between windows uh, windows vista came out right windows vista was an absolute flop because they didn't actually even consider what the- so even though there were people that were you know they were giving windows vista nobody wanted to use it nobody wanted to engage it even the manufacturers refused they said we will not use windows vista that is when windows had to go back and say okay microsoft came out with a campaign it's about you it's about you and they created a whole new campaign and launched windows 7 in a matter of like 4 or 5 months okay so for imagine even for a company like microsoft they had to have that much people fighting back for people to engage with say and say okay we are going to listen to the customer right and so in many ways that's what it is microsoft guys are like a behemoth right it's like a big dinosaur you cannot touch it it's like you know thick one inch thick skin you can't touch it they they own the market and they know it and that's how they behave right and that's exactly what window uh, android has done to them android is basically starting to eat up right so they're grow- chrome books and all of those are android coming into the windows space but over time you know windows will also start coming down if you notice now their operating system they saying is free of cost so they are trying really hard because they have to compete and they see if they can't do it they cannot compete with uh, google and all those other guys <clears throat> cool so yeah what's so, next sir quick quiz time right so first so the user is trying to do something here identify what heuristics are being applied not violated we are trying to identify what uh, what has been applied here so yep go on flexibility flexibility because and he can do a lot of when for us for a text he can apply as many things as possible to make it um, interesting of whatever he is thinking in his head okay 
I I think uh, here visibility and system status, something like uh, they are uh, giving some information while one thing going. So the user is doing the font size changing. It is automatically applies there. Visibility and system status. Okay. Visibility of system status, flexibility and efficiency of use. Yeah. Anything else? Recognize rather than recall. How? Because a uh, user uh, don't know the font name, so he can like just type in and uh, see the options and he know okay, like this font I want to use in that. So is that recognition rather than recall? Because uh, we are is recognizing, no? Yeah, like uh, we are giving options to user to like recognize which uh, you want. So we are generally like uh, uh, decreasing the cognitive load of the user. So what you are saying is when uh, the user is typing, you are giving some suggestion. So that is helping them recognize. Yeah. And uh, also in, uh, in drop down, we are giving the options. So like we are like giving the options so like he can like choose anything rather than like recalling the name of the font. So what you are also talking about is multiple ways of changing the font. So we see the person is doing the, I mean, typing and changing, then they are uh, going to the drop down, then then also changing. So, okay. So we have uh, flexibility and efficiency of use. We have recognition rather than recall. And we also have visibility of system status. Which one would you prioritize over the other? Visibility of system status. Because efficiency of use. Recognition. Flexibility and efficiency of use because so we are providing two options to change the font name. There are two ways. Also, time you can choose from the top down. Okay, so let's see who wins, right? So let's understand the context first, right? What you are trying to do here is you have created a layer and that's the text layer is there. Your goal now is to change the font. And you are able to do that uh, by doing, you know, different things. So you have flexibility of uh, uh, flexibility of you know typing and getting it if you are a, if you know the font name right and but if you have a, a other option of going to the drop, drop down and then selecting one you can do whatever you want right based on your use case and how much expertise you have on the tool and yeah of course for achieving that purpose of uh, selecting the font very very efficiently there are, you know, other intrinsic heuristics that are being applied, which is, yes, you are typing something you are able to recognize because there is a suggestion that is there and you're seeing the result being reflected on the left. But according to our goal, the core heuristic that you can think about is flexibility and efficiency of use.